This is commonly kind of known as the false morel. And when I was a kid, I was basically told this is poisonous. Don't touch it. It'll it'll take you down faster than the plague. Um, so today I am going to bust that myth and we're gonna we're gonna eat this. Go ahead and pick it here. So on a true morel, you're gonna have a stem that is hollow. The stem ends at the, the base of the, the cone shape, whereas in a false morel, it's basically going to protrude into the rest of the body. And I will cut that open later. I can see another one right there. So we'll go over and we'll pick that, put them in our bag, and we'll continue looking for the true morel. That seems to be all that we're finding today. Is the false morel. I find that they tend to come out a little bit earlier, so in this particular location, we might just be a little bit early. Um, so that's the great thing about when you really get into foraging. It doesn't matter what time of year it is or if you're in the right spot, you're gonna be able to find something that you can eat. Uh, with confidence and gain um, nutrients from it. No matter where you are or what time of the year it is, there's always going to be something and a way to survive in the wild. So we'll forge this up and continue on. Like I said, there's several different species of this that you can find. This one is most likely Carolinia. <clears throat> Typically it's, it's fairly low um, and can be boiled out and cooked out without any toxic effect. Now, just a general warning, I would not advise anyone doing this at all, um, but I feel comfortable enough doing it and I'm going to do it in the right way. I feel like it's a very low risk for me, but I wouldn't, I am not condoning, nor do I think that you should ever eat this until you fully understand this. So what I wanna do first is show you why it's significantly different from a true morel. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it in half. Okay. So there is the inside. Now you can kind of see where you get the name, uh, the brain mushroom from. This is a, a mushroom that while the, the stem might be somewhat hollow, for the most part, there's a lot of substance to this. Uh, when you cut open a true morel, we'll find that you have essentially both the stem as well as the uh, you know the main part of the body of the of the morel is going to be all one hollow tube. So if you cut it in half, it's going to follow all the way up the stem, and that's going to go around the head, and it's all completely hollow and it doesn't have any of these connections in the middle or any of this substance in the middle. You know, this is not a hollow mushroom. This is a fungus that is, it has a lot of uh, substance to it and it's very heavy as well. So the morel is gonna be hollow. This is not gonna be completely hollow. The head, the, the main stem might be uh, somewhat hollow. As you can see, there's some concave uh, hollowness to this, this part of the stem that I cut through, but for the, for the most part, the main head that kind of comes off of the where the stem would be is all connected and part of this and has tons and tons of folds. Whereas the morel is gonna be, uh, you can see a pretty good line of the tube that comes up and, and it's also going to be completely hollow. So easy way to tell the difference also. Typically, I find that these are much more redder in color. Uh, they get large. They don't have much of a stem. It's usually just like a brain sitting on the ground, and then you do have a little bit of a stem when you when you start to look closer. But for the most part, it's just this big, like giant lump of a fungus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to boil this and probably change the water out at least once, maybe twice, um, and then we're going to fry it, and then I'm going to attempt to try. A few very small pieces and I'm going to see how I feel and give it several hours and we'll kind of go from there. We have here the 
false morale. Okay, so it's good to understand that false morale is a term that's used like it's basically saying not a morale. They do confuse people sometimes. Don't get into the idea that the false morale itself is just one mushroom because when you're talking about false morale, it's sort of an overall term used to talk about a whole group of mushrooms. A whole group of mushrooms that are, you know, not morels. They're false morels, okay? So there's a ton of different species that are false morels. And so they have different uh, levels of toxicity and they look different. And basically, you know, using the, uh, the things that I was talking about earlier, you can quickly separate them into whether they are a true morel or a false morel. As I was growing up, I was always told that this is a toxic mushroom. This is a poisonous mushroom. You shouldn't handle it, shouldn't touch it, you don't want it around, you know, you should destroy it, wipe it off the face of the earth, right? Well, there's a lot of mystery behind these, and while that's not entirely untrue, they do have something in it called gyromitrin. And kind of depending on the species and even the mushroom itself, there can be different levels of this gyromitrin. So gyromitrin is known as a carcinogenic chemical. So this isn't something that you, you don't want to uh, mess with these mushrooms unless you really know what you're doing and you're super confident. So this is in no way to suggest to you that you should do this. In fact, I strongly urge everyone not to do this purely out of safety. So you can get very, very sick just from handling it. If I stick my fingers in my mouth or something or, you know, eat it raw or whatever, I could potentially get very, very sick if I get this chemical inside of me and digest it. So when your body breaks down gyromitrin, it actually turns into, uh, when it's digested, it turns into um, a big long word that I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's essentially what's used in rocket fuel. So that's kind of an interesting fact and obviously not something that you really want to consume or digest. What I'm attempting to do today is to boil the mushroom sufficiently several times, staying away from the fumes, and I'm going to hopefully boil that gyromitrin out. I am then going to cook the mushroom, uh, pan fry it like you would any other mushroom, probably gonna overdo it just to be on the safe side, and then I'm gonna try a very, very small amount and I'm going to kind of see what it does to my body, kind of see how I feel afterwards. Now, in many parts of the world, people eat these all the time. They cook them, and so supposedly the gyromitrin is supposed to be eliminated with cooking. So as long as you aren't you know, highly allergic to it or highly uh, sensitive to it, you can you know, eat these just like you would a normal mushroom, supposedly, and you won't get sick, unless you do. So again, this is not something you should do. So I'm gonna get my fire started and gonna get some water boiling. I've fairly confidently um, determined that this is probably Gyromitrin carolinia. This dry one here that I showed in the video previously, is that it's now dried because it's been about a week since I found this, is probably Gyromitra brunea. And it doesn't have as many lobes, but these, these particular species of false morel are supposed to have the lowest level of gyromitrin. So it's the most safe of something stupid that you can do. So when I was talking earlier, I talked about how I had found both of these, what I believe is both of these species. And uh, I just really wanted to show you this one all kind of dried up, but I won't be consuming that today. Don't need to do extra experimentation. So we're gonna go with the fresh one. I'm also the most confident in my identification of this one, as it is the most common type of false morel in this area. 
So I'm just waiting for my water to boil now. And we're gonna get a, a few chunks of this that we're gonna cut off and we'll be uh, starting the boiling process. The first of probably a couple different boils. So we're getting very close to our water boiling here, so I'm just going to tear some chunks of this off and start the boiling process. So I'm probably going to uh, put considerably more mushroom in than what I'm actually gonna try. So we have some boiling, some steam coming up. So I'm gonna dump this liquid out. And I'm not gonna try to breathe in any of those fumes. Another reason why I'm not doing this inside of my kitchen, and I'm doing it in a well ventilated area outside so I don't expose anyone else. So we're just going to put some more water in there and boil it again. Got a really good rolling boil going on. That's been going on for a couple minutes now. And so I feel comfortable this is the second boil. We're gonna go ahead and drain the water and then we're gonna start uh, basically sauteing. Now, I wanna be clear, so what this video is doing and what this video is proving is only, only that I, myself, as in an individual, can or cannot consume this without getting sick. This is not scientific at all. This is not proving that this mushroom is edible in any way, shape, or form. I cannot stress that enough. The only thing that it is proving is that I myself, as an individual, either are or are not susceptible to the gyromitrin um, that is inside of false morels. So I could be fine and the next guy tries it and he could die or I could die, and the next guy that tries it could be fine. Um, so what will be proven today, again, is whether or not I can tolerate this mushroom, and whether or not, so either I'll be um, uh, very sick and be able to sell my farts to NASA, or I'll be fine, and now I know that this is something that I can tolerate, and I will probably, most likely, never eat it or mess with it again. This is something that I wanna do for me, um, it's probably the same reason, you know, that I signed up for the military and went to ranger school and that I do, you know, the world's longest paddle race and I, I can't hardly um, stop doing things that are potentially bad for my health and may get me killed. It's, uh, it's not a great thing, but uh, just kind of part of, of who I am. So this is rolling really good. So I'm very happy about that. So we're gonna throw this lid back on and we're gonna dump this the rest of the way out. Get all the liquid out. Keeping it real basic here, using a dab of olive oil, just enough to coat the pan and prevent it from sticking. I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of garlic salt on this because if I'm gonna get sick or die from this mushroom, at least it was uh, seasoned fairly well. Just gonna let this heat up a little bit, pour some more of this liquid, let this completely drain out. I want as little liquid as I can even though I'm going to heat it up to the point where hopefully most of the uh, other stuff is, the bad stuff is heated out of it. Okay, now we're just gonna Toss a little bit on there. Oh. 
I want to be uh, clear that I certainly could not really find um, maybe maybe people who've gotten sick, but not anyone who has has died from it um, directly from this. Um, also, I want to point out that people have died from morel mushrooms um, if they're not cooked thoroughly or not cooked correctly. Um, people die from true morel mushrooms. It happens all the time. Not all the time, but it happens on a frequent enough basis that it should be uh, put out there that while these may be uh, harmful um, if they're not cooked properly, morels are also harmful if they're not cooked properly. So make sure you cook your morels very good. Also, make sure you always know what you're doing and you know what you're eating without any doubt whatsoever. If you have a doubt, don't eat it. They sell fairly good stuff all the time at farmer's markets now. They also, they say they sell food at grocery stores. That's debatable, but if you go to the produce section anyway, it should be fine. These don't smell that bad. They look sort of like a glob globular thing of like raw chicken guts. So we're going to cook these on high. I'm going to get them done. Like well done. They're popping and crackling now so we're on the right track. So I think we're getting kind of close. I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of this garlic salt on here. Just a touch. I kind of want to do get a taste of what, you know, they actually taste like. So I don't want to go too crazy on the seasoning. Cause I may be um, a rare person that gets to, to try these. We're getting really close now. So I'm going to shut this off and we're going to get them to start cooling down here. Now there's really only thing, only one thing left to do and that's to go for it and try it. So I'm going to pick a piece here. Nothing very big. Just a small piece here. Honestly, it just doesn't really taste like anything. If I had to describe it, I would say uh, the only thing I really get is is like an earthy, an earthy taste. It's mushy, which I don't like. If I would have put, you know, breading on it like a typical morel, like I typically do to morels and sort of fried it, it would probably have a, like a crunchy texture, but it's um, mushy, which isn't very appetizing. But I'm just gonna stop there. Now the only thing left to do is to wait two to 24 hours to see how it affects me. So it is. April 19th, 3 o'clock, 3.01. So tomorrow at this time, if I haven't had diarrhea, nausea, upset stomach, threw up, or died, 
I'm going to call this a success for me. Again, there's nothing scientific about this. Don't eat these mushrooms. I urge you not to. They may kill you. It's not worth the risk. I guess we'll uh, hopefully see you tomorrow. Okay, so I'm going to be upfront and honest with you guys. I totally forgot to make a video of what happened, but clearly I'm still alive, uh, much to the disappointment of my ex-wife. Um, as far as symptoms go, I had absolutely no diarrhea, no vomiting, no sickness, no nausea, nothing. Um, so clearly didn't really affect me that much. Um, but I will say that I'll probably never do it again. Just honestly, the mushroom uh, was not what I would consider choice. It wasn't very good. It was very mushy and very bland. Um, so I didn't like the texture and I, I didn't like the taste. So to me, there's very high risk, very low reward. No reason to eat it again. Didn't like it. Um, and there's plenty of other mushrooms out there that don't have um, anything harmful in them um, that I can eat as much as I want to of and not have to boil several times or whatever. So won't be eating it again. So that's my take on it. Uh, let me know if you've ever tried this mushroom. And uh, again, I don't condone ever eating it um, unless you totally know what you're doing and it's on you what happens. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching this video and uh, we'll see you next time.